just for a preaching thought, is, is the God of Abraham your God too? And we've just been going through this the last week. We're in this book of John, and, uh, uh, and Jesus was confronting them and told them that who you think your father is is not your father. And that was tough when we realized that they wanted to kill him. That's some tough words. We, so now we're on this next side of it. I just kind of want you to think about, uh, you know, how, how do we get in the situation that we get ourselves into in life? And if you look at that, you just think about that, for example, uh, who you say you are, who you're connected to, who you belong to, that's all he's saying. And then Jesus comes, and then he realizes that all these people you're saying that you're connected to, you're not connected to. There's, there's no characteristic, no, no resemblance, and all these different things, and you're going through it, and you see. So the next couple of scriptures, I want you to think about something here. And I need to ask you a question today. Uh, is the calling of God, has it fallen on you? And I'm going to give you three examples of, you know, of what happens to you when the calling of God falls on you. It fell on Jesus and you saw what was happening when he came amongst him. And sometimes when you come amongst your critics, your family, your friends, your co-worker, and he's going to tell when the calling of God falls on you. Let's look at 52 and 53 again. Let's read, let's read that in your own. The Jews said to him, now we know that you have a demon. Abraham is dead. And the prophets, and you say, if anyone keeps my word, man, and if anyone keeps my word, he shall never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham, who is dead? And the prophets are dead? Who do you make yourself out to be? And that's tough. How dare you, Jesus, come in here? Who do you think you are? I understand. I just read all that to you. Father Abraham, that's a, that's a heck of a name. Father of many. Come on, look what Abraham did. Look what Abraham stood for. So these prophets, they had every right. How are you going to come in here and say you're better than him? And he died. How are you going to say that you can't die? Think about all that is going through. So the first thing I want you to think about. What is keeping you from answering it? What is keeping you? He came at him. What's keeping you from answering it? If, 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 if the Lord has fallen on you, then what's keeping you from answering it when your family, your friend, your court, and they come at you? What's keeping you from answering it? What are you trying to hold on to? I mean, look, they came, the staffman came. What, what's, what's keeping you from answering it? It ain't that you don't know right from wrong. Wow. What you think about that? What's keeping you from answering it? And there's some stuff that popped into your mind. Not say I didn't go through and tell my lid. I want you to think about you and you write your notes. We changed the game here. I can preach and go to you, walk and say, what a mess. But no, you got to look at yourself. What's keeping you from answering it amongst all your family and friends, coworkers, when they're not doing right? And you go up to you doing dance stuff. You're doing foolish stuff. You're doing ignorant stuff. Heard in Sunday school. What's keeping you from answering it? What's keeping you from holding them accountable? You say you love them and you know what they're doing and you don't even try to confront it. What's keeping you from answering it? Ah, ah, ah we got the answers. Mm. 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 So I didn't realize how many folk I talk to on a daily go along to get along. They try to impress man versus God. You know the answer. You know what it's like, but you're afraid. Yeah. And something got you bound up, and you are afraid to go against them. Mm -hmm. And maybe because you don't want to be left on the outside. And brother, I, I 
don't know what you say because he said, who is my family? They that do the will of the Father. So I don't even know the name of family, the name of friends, the name of co-worker, the name of church member. Why you want to be hanging around a lot of foolishness? Impressed by what? What you drive, that'll be gone. When you heard about the house you live in, that can be gone. Your education, come on, all that, all, your money, all your, all that. What are you trying to impress them? God got it all. What more do you need? <coughs> Is he Jehovah God? We read all that. Is he your provider? So what are you looking for? What are you searching for? You got it all in Christ. What more can I? What the 5,000 house can do? Verse 2,500. You still won't live in it. You still gonna cook. You're gonna do the same thing in a 2,500 square foot home, you're gonna do it in an 8,000 square foot home. But you want to impress the folk. Yeah. Isn't it crazy? Ten folk lived in 800 square foot and they loved and got along. Four people live in 5,000 and they can't and they hate each other. They all got their own bathroom. Come on, brother, it's crazy how. And we can't no, no one, man, we had to wait your turn. You had to get up early because I want to get in there and get the cold. I want to get the hot water. I don't want to take a cold shower today. I look back at life, it's crazy now. We got so much stuff. And not sharing with anyone. Didn't have nothing and share with everyone. It's the craziest thing how life goes. Man, I need to impress. I want to impress God. I don't need to impress man anymore. Come on, what does it mean? Mm. Man, man, when it falls on you, when it falls on you, your whole life starts to change. When, when God falls on you, you start to see things differently. Expect to be challenged by the world daily. You got to expect that he walks about to and fro, seeking who he may devour. Brothers, when it falls on you, when you start living for the Lord, expect to be challenged. If you're not being challenged, if you don't have credit, trust me, you're not living for the Lord. I am telling you, this world is not your friend, and they're going to come at you, and they're going to let you know we don't like what you stand for. Amen. 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 That's right. And guess how they've done it to us? This is what we all do. You, say, you heard me say we. We just won't speak on it. Well, that ain't my business. Yes, it is your business. Now, remember, I just told you. I'll go back to the beginning. It's your business if he's fell on you. If the Spirit of the Lord has fallen on you, then it's your business. I don't care if it's your mama, your daddy, your brother, your son. I don't care if I'm so tired. I said, well, that's my family. What's that mean? Right, right, wrong, wrong. <laughs> Man. Maybe you don't believe me. And then the Jews said to him, Now we know that you have a demon. They're going to challenge you. You got a demon because I'm trying to. Come on. And Abraham is dead. And the prophets, and you say, If anyone keeps my word, he should never taste death. And brother, I am telling you, absent from the body and what? Present with the Lord. Hey, I understand from dust I came and dust I will return, but my soul gone on with the Lord. Amen, somebody. So I look at life differently. I talk different. I walk different. I see things different. Not because I'm special. It's because I carry his word in me. It's amazing how it changes you. Money don't change you if you got his word in you. Because you know money is just a provider. It just moves one thing to another thing. Come on now. For where your heart is. Yeah. Yeah. I told you that one story, so I'm way past that. I got fired from K State making hundred some thousand, went to twenty some thousand, and God showed me something back here. And brother, I ain't gonna never I ain't gonna never forget 2006 changed our life. Cause we went from insurance to usher. And brother, some of you still living in insurance and you're not living in usher. But God will provide. He can take twenty thousand and do what a hundred thousand can't do. Now, unless you live, it's so hard to stand. Money ain't never made it. It's God walking with you and taking care of it and knocking all the doors down. Done had the money, done had the car, done had all this stuff, 
and it don't do nothing. It's amazing how life goes. <laughs> Expect to be challenged. Folk don't like you walking with the Lord. They don't like you. Oh, you think you were. I remember. Yeah, you remember. Because I used to smoke it with you. I used to chase them with you. But now God done put me on this side. And I don't do all that no more. And now you mad at me. I can validate it. Yeah, you're right. But you're talking about the 80s, me. You're talking about the 90s. <laughs> Let's talk about the 2000s. <laughs> Let's talk about the last 20. See, you want to talk about the first 20. I'm going to talk about the last 20. Come on now. I know what I was like. I don't need you to tell me. I know what I was like. But because of his grace and because of his mercy, I can't do nothing but lift up God. Because God loved me when I was acting foolish. I don't know why God didn't kill me. I was trying to kill myself. I was trying to do all that. But somehow God preserved me. Not to get a big head and sit over in my big house and drive my fancy car and talk about him. He's going to say, boy, how are you talking about him? You used to be in the project. You used to have that car that comes put put all night. Come on now. Don't you ever forget where you came from. I was the same God that had you on food stamps. And the same God that got you over here watching. I'm the same God. Huh? Yeah. What I'm realizing, I'm just, I'm just getting good, doing it. I'm just getting going. So look what he said. This is where he wants to get us to. Is your faith bigger than your circumstances? And brother, I'm here to tell you, that's why a lot of us get so messed up, because you allow your circumstances to be bigger than your faith. You don't believe me? Let's see what it says in 54 and 55. And Jesus answered. <laughs> y'all think y'all gonna trip me up. Come on, Gus. They think they're gonna make Jesus answer. You know, they couldn't put Jesus ahead of it. And Jesus answered. What did he say? If I honor myself, ooh, don't be in there. Ego. Edging God out. And I had one of them egos. Oh, I done made it now. All of you said I couldn't, wasn't going to make it. Huh? You ain't the only one. You ain't going to be no help. I know why you were saying that. Because that's John and Alicia's boy. It's crazy how life looks. And you said, yeah, they can't make it. Same way they said you can't make it. Because your kid, your mom and daddy wasn't no kind of her. It ain't got nothing to do with her. But the father of fathers, her father Abraham. See, my daddy has, was connected to the daddy. See, the problem is you connect to your earthly daddy and not your spiritual daddy. So it is limited. Yes. And it is limited. And man, every now and then I gotta remind myself that my honor is nothing. Right. Take all the accolades, throw them away now. Sitting there watching, that's why I said that. Coach King, I don't care every accolade we can put on a coach, you can't get him up and walk now. Well, yes, sir. 14 months. Care how powerful he was, what kind of person he was, an unbelievable man of God. But come on now, there ain't none of that. So everything that you do, what's it mean? My honor is nothing. It is my father who honors me, of whom you say that he is your God. Mm, mm, mm. The very first thing you better get out here. What have you had to overcome in your life journey like Abraham? See, everybody wants to read the Bible. I know Abraham's story, and I'm not going to sit there and tell you that. I just read that to you in the scripture. You go read yourself. I want you to get up and get on the mic and tell me your story. See, you know what you overcome. It's amazing. If we all get up here and get real true with the Lord, we couldn't do nothing but run around here and shout all day long, crying, realizing, I overcome this. I overcome this. I overcame this. I overcame that. And God Still is I'm not proud of it, but it's part of the journey. That's right. There's a whole lot of stuff I'm not proud of that I've done. Yeah. 
but it's part of my journey. And I got a real journey because it's tied into a testimony, not a test of lying. It's a testimony. Man, if I were to sit down and tell see, you think you know the story. You only know this and this. I know the whole story. I lived it all. And every now and then when I get teary-eyed, see, when you ain't around and I'm by myself, and sometimes it just, see, it's weird, a grown man by himself preaching the gospel because I get some tears coming down because I should have been dead. I should have been in prison. I should Man, I've done some crazy stuff that could have landed me here. But God, all by himself, all by himself, and I the world to know. I can't shut up. I can't back up. I can't be quiet. I gotta let everybody know how good and wonderful and faithful my God has been. You can take your old dried up testimony all you want. And act like you sophisticated and you ain't never done nothing and you want to sit here like this. But every now and then, the fire that you my the fire that you my I gotta let some folks know that I ain't always been on this side and I don't deserve his blessings. But I am going to take them. So I know Abraham got a journey. But what's your journey? What's your story? What's your prodigal son's story? Come on. What hall king was you eating in? Who, been, who was you laying with? It ain't just a woman at the well. I know some other women. And the one you with now ain't your wife. Come on now, the one you with now ain't your husband. The one you with now. So, and some of us, I wish it hadn't. Some of us took us a few to figure out the right way. Because we didn't wait on God. So don't you dog got this next generation because there's some stuff under your skirt too. If you're the last American virgin, then you can stand up and throw a rock at it. But if you ain't, drop your rocks. I'm so tired of folk talking about this generation like they didn't do nothing. Come on now. Slipping in the dark didn't start in this generation. That bit of folk been slipping in the dark for many years. And God was covering you while you were slipping in the dark. I don't know about you, but when I look at 54 and 55 I just read to you, and that second point comes out to me, what really caused your faith to grow like Abraham? And brother, I can't sit here and tell you. Brother, I am telling you and telling you and telling you. When I look back over my life, and there were some things that happened. Oh, one of my warriors at gospel used to say this all the time. If you worked it out, God surely didn't figure it out. See? And brother, I'm realizing now what that means that the older I get. There's some things that I couldn't see myself way through, and I want to throw my hands up and say, oh, I'm done. I can't find my way through this. And God every now and then would show up and show out. Come on now. And he just knew how. You heard in the song, I was going right. And God said, go left and vice versa. Come on now. I, he told me to talk truthful and I'm still telling lies. Deliver me, Lord. What do you need to be delivered from today? I'm here to tell you what caused your faith to grow like Abraham. That had to be the longest journey ever. Mm -hmm. And even somebody like Abraham, I want to give all this credit to, we got that same faith in us. Yeah. He's walking in a lonely walk. And then that's why I said, look at D. Can you imagine if your son looks at you and says, well, who's going to be the sacrifice? Mm -mm. They wasn't done. No, no. And even Abraham told the other people that went with him, y'all stay back here. We got to take this journey by ourselves. Yeah. 
See, every now and then, God will put you on a journey where can't nobody get to you. Hey, yes, sir. Oh, come on now. See, y'all yes, want to placate yeah. this thing. See, can't nobody get to you. Your mama can't tell you what she thinks. Your daddy can't tell you. The preacher can't tell you. See, every now and then, I told Mitchell, see, every now and then, you couldn't get my call, and I didn't get a call. See, that's when God wants to talk to you. He says, you mind. I knew you from your mother's womb. I got this. I don't care if it's 49 years or nine months. I got you. And every now and then, you're trying to find some folks, and you can't find nobody. And you're crying until you can't cry no more. And then God steps in. And you can hear him. And the Bible says in 46 and 10 in Psalm, be still and know that I am God. And I will exalt thee throughout the heavens and the earth. See, so many of us are trying to exalt ourselves. Versus waiting on God to exalt you. And man, I am telling you, the thing that didn't kill you made your faith grow. Yes, sir. And I can tell you, if I gave you the mic right now, and you could close your eyes, and you didn't think anybody was in here but you and God, and you started talking to God, and the folk really heard your story, they wouldn't look at you crazy anymore. They look at you and say, that sister's amazing. Mm -hmm. The stuff that she had to endure. Yes, sir. The stuff she had to go through. Yes, sir. And yet, all along, your faith was growing. Yes. Ain't yes. that some good news? Yes, to sir. know that because it didn't kill you, yes, sir. it grew your faith. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And now you can walk up that hill with your son, with your yes. daughter, mm -hmm. with your spouse, mm -hmm. with your best friend. And you can look to the right, and you can look to the left, and you can look in front of you, and you can look in behind of you. And somehow, the faith of God that is in us will say, God will provide. Yes, I don't know how it's going to happen, but I know He's going to provide. Yes, I don't know how water, come on, and bread yes. fed us. Now, there's some of you in here that don't want to tell the story, but you remember the days when you looked in your refrigerator and you didn't have to move nothing because all you had was a milk carton that turned into a water jug. Yeah. I, and that didn't kill us. Now you do that, now they say, throw that carton away. Man, we put milk in there, Kool-Aid, juice, whatever. We mixed all kinds of stuff. Isn't it crazy? I don't know how. We all got in line for the government cheese. The government cheese made the best cheese. Come on, baby. The grilled cheese salad. Now I'm too good. I'm too bougie. I wouldn't never let nobody know. I wouldn't dare spend the food stamp. It raised your butt for 20 years. Get off your high horse and realize that you ain't no better than anybody just because you got a nickel now. You can rub two nickels together, you don't forget where you came from. I've been impressing the wrong group. I'm going to be like Abraham, let me get on out of here. Remember the purpose of the trial of life is to teach you to trust God. Do it all. See, I'm not going to let you walk out of here feeling sorry for yourself. Because we've been through hell and back. But God. And everything that we've been through. Needs to get us to have a voice like Father Abraham. The same God that blessed Father Abraham is blessing Donald Wayne Smith right now. The same God that blessed Father Abraham is blessing you and your household right now. Yeah. Don't get it twisted. Everything that God gave Father Abraham, he gave you too. You just ain't activated and started using it yet. Some of you think you're doing it on your own strength. But just hold on a little while. Your strength's going to run out too. Come on. Yeah. Your money going to get funny every now and then. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Folks, say, you tell your story, don't catch me. I ain't the first one been fired. I'm Mine just was public. I couldn't have lied if I tried. <laughs> it was in the Care Journal, the, come on, the State Frankfurt paper, the Lesson Herald, and guess what? There was a whole lot said, good. I didn't like him anyway. <laughs> and you know what I've learned? If you don't have some folk that don't like you, you can't be elevated. Come on, I had to 
no clue that most of the folk who didn't like me was elevating me because he said, I'll make you. Well, you know the word. He said, I'll make your enemies your footsteps. So I was, see, y'all were wondering how I got there so fast. <laughs> y'all were hating so much. <laughs> Rejoiced to see my day. And he saw it and was glad. I'm just not going to feed you like hogs. I got to feed you like sheep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The day Dean Theron came and changed it. See, I get excited. I get to slobbering and hollering and speaking. You can't understand. But you can read. <laughs> so you can't walk out here and say, man, he got loud. I get loud and you can't understand it, but you can understand this because I'm saying everything I'm putting up here. So you got it both ways. And if you can't read good, get to buy somebody who's smart. That's what I did in school. I knew the smart ones. Man, it ain't that I wasn't smart, I just didn't want to study. I had too much other stuff on my mind versus studying. So I get by the smart one go. <laughs> now the problem is some of you got in trouble because you got up straight A's you can't go from D's to A's <laughs> you got to miss every, every one of them you got to miss come on now maybe somebody else did what I did I ain't the only one Then I got ahead of the curve. Let me show you how I got ahead of the curve. I started placing my hope in the right things. Yeah. See, I got ahead of the curve. See, I'm in God's hands now. Come on now, I'm gonna walk you home. See, I ain't gotta cheat no more. Cause what God has for me is for me. That's fine. So you wanna ask yourself, how could a kid who, you know the old way they said it back in the day, he got held back. <laughs> I was laughing, putting this text together, just thinking about stuff. Hell back means you failed. <laughs> but see, that was just a nice way. He <laughs> ain't ready to move up yet. <laughs> I think we need to hold him back a year. He's immature. <laughs> now I'm in the I'm in the classroom where my hope lies. Mm -hmm. Are you placing your hope in Christ and rejoicing in it also? Mm. Brother, I would never tell you anything other than life ain't always been pretty. But boy, when I look back over it, it's worth rejoicing in. Yes, sir. Because Christ was the one that saw the good, the bad, the ugly, and put right. it all together. Mm. Right. And guess what yeah. we got today? Look at the beautiful creations that all of us come out to be. Mm -hmm. And I want you to look the next time you look at yourself and Satan's trying to get in you and everybody trying to tell you that you ain't going to be no count, you ain't never with no count, your mama. You're going to say, yeah, you're right. Yeah. And I believed that for years. But because I'm in the right classroom now, 
Listen to the right one speak to me. Listen to the right one tell me. Come on now. It's amazing how God speaks to you. Yeah. It's amazing. I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. Yes. I need my, where's my strength coming from? So now I'm rolling now. I'm, I'm, I'm in the right classroom. For so long I was in the world's classroom. And I was doing the world's stuff. And, 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 never, and it never could. It never could. And now I'm right here at the end of me. Amen. And look what it says here. Were you willing to give up for God like Abraham? When you're in the right classroom, guess what? When you're in the right classroom with God, you won't hold nothing. Matter of fact, we'll do what we're supposed to do. Because when you say, how many, and I said this to you many a time. You know why we've all messed up? Very rarely have I seen this happen in churches. When, when they are born to us, the first thing we ought to do is what? Give them back to who? To God. And how many people give them back to God? So Abraham was tested to see. And look what he said. You were ready to give up your son. I know you're ready to go. I know you're ready to follow me. See, brother, talk's cheap. What are you willing to give up? What are you willing to give up? Let's go on. And I pray that you can answer these questions for yourself. The scripture is real plain. God just allowed me to make some questions and make you look at yourself. You look and see those last three questions you got out of here. When did you learn that the Lord will provide like he did for Abraham? When did you learn that? And if you can't, if you if you're struggling trying to figure it out, then you haven't learned it. I just preach and I tell you that if you, you put the mess together, if you still are struggling, when someone asks you a question, how do you know he's Jehovah? How do you know he will provide? And if you have a hard time answering those questions, trust me, you're still struggling with it. So a closing thought, when you walk out of here, I try to put all that, because this is powerful, I want to make sure, is Abraham your example yet? The only way Abraham was a mighty example because of three things, and I want to make sure you walk out with these three things. A lot's been said, but put these three things on your refrigerator. Number one, hard to do. No, I'm supposed to be there. This is what I'm supposed to be doing, and it's hard to do. Because the world comes at you, and they make you feel good, and they make you feel appreciated, and they get you the attaboy, and you don't get all this from God. That's the expectation. So the very first thing, do you put the calling of God above earthly honors? Hard to do. Yes, it is. That's why you put it on. I got three things to be like Abraham through those scriptures. It's hard to do. Know what to do, but it's hard to do. I don't want to move fast. You got it? Amen? Amen. You got it? Amen. Number two. Yeah. Why read Genesis to Revelations then? If the circumstances have come. Because you're going to be challenged on every side. Do you believe God in spite of circumstances? <coughs> Some are worse than others. Some of us, man, you've had, man, why you had to go through that? I was sitting, this message brought back all this stuff. I was in a class. They come back the new way. Athletic directors, coaches, learning the kids that you deal with. And they caused these complex traumas. And how one trigger opens up another one. And by the time they're 13, if they've had all these things, they, then it tells you they're on the trajectory of this and this, and it just goes through. And it talks about the sexual abuse and the drug abuse and alcohol abuse. And just uh, and one of them was how they just not uh, valued by their parents and their family members. And this is crazy. And they're going through all this. So we get, them on the, we get them on the football field. We get them on the baseball field. We get them on the basketball court. We get them in the classroom. And they come to us before 13, they've had... All four areas. Yeah. Abandonment, that's what they called it. And I'm saying, what everybody, we all 
always had love, even if we didn't have, it seemed like everybody loved one another and helped each other, and you got kids that won't attach because they've never been attached to anything. They've been sexually abused. They've been drugs. I tell them, come on, alcohol. And I'm like, whoa, who does this before they're 13? And I've got to believe that the God I serve, that you might have had all four of them, but if you get in the right classroom and God falls on you and rolls on you, he can take nothing and make something. The world will call it mental illness, and God will call it spiritually. My spirit fell on you. And it broke that mental illness. And we can go home. I want you to walk out here ignorant. I want you to know, do you place your hope in the fact that Jesus came to earth to die for you and rejoice in that coming? I tell Satan every now and then, you should have had me when you had me. Yeah. 13 to 32, because I was just out there, I thought I was living, I was just existing. And I tell y'all every time I think about that, just think about what Sister D said, her testimony and her kids and all that. And, you know, that's, that's tough to have an 18-year-old murdered. And she says to her parents, I've heard the pastor's story, I've heard y'all's story, and I keep that in front of her, I said many times. She thought she had time. But the bullet caught her at 18. And I've been in clubs where they shot up in there. It's all the craziness. I've been ran off the road. I've had all this stuff that happened to me. Like, wow, man. I got road rage. I got anger issues. Come on, but I'm no different than anybody. I got a whole lot of stuff that I got to unpack every now and then. And life can come at you fast. But, baby, I am so, I don't know where I'd be if I had not been in the classroom. And I'm just going to tell you right now, because I came to earth to die for you, and you can rejoice in that fact yes. that the worst of you, he died for. Yes. And I want you to rejoice. Yes. Quit trying to hide from the worst of you. That's right. Quit trying to tummy tuck that. That's right. Quit trying to suppress that. Walk in it. Yes, sir. Walk in it yes, and see how your life gets renewed. See how you truly rejoice in it. Yes, you keep trying to hide from the ugliness of your past. And that's what he died for. And now you can rejoice. Yes, and I tell folk all the time, the greatest thing I can ever give a, a old sinner that's a saint now, share it before everybody else can. Yeah. See, because when they share it, they're going to say, oh, she done told that. You're talking about old news. <coughs> you ain't told me. You, you, you ain't telling me nothing that she ain't told me. She was lost. She was blind. Mm -hmm. And I pray that every one of you in here, when you go home today, you will be able to walk in the newness of